I wasn't me until I put on the mask. In all seriousness though, this is going to be my first YouTube video and we can talk about all of these cool 3D prints. So get your list and check it twice because this YouTube channel is going to be freaking bananas. I had to put that one in there because Christmas was literally yesterday. And no, I can't really see out of the mask because of the humidity in Florida. Ooh, that mask was, uh, well, helmet was pretty warm. So uh, let me, oh, and there goes the light. <laughs> so 3D printing lets you make lots of cool stuff like this mask from Call of Duty. However, I've never robbed a bank in this, don't worry. So I wanna talk about the first things you should print with your printer immediately when you've unboxed it on Christmas day. Let's get the smallest thing out of the way. If you've gotten the AMS unit, you need to print these AMS protectors. What they are is these little TPU protectors that go on your AMS. Now I printed mine at a TPU because every time I tried to print in PLA or PETG, it was just too brittle and it would crack right here on the bottom where it clips onto your AMS. What these do is you put a PTFE tube inside of here that keeps the filament going into your AMS perfectly straight. Now I've ran these for about a month and a half, two months now, um, ever since Black Friday, really. And these AMS protectors have worn out. So I've had to replace the PTFE tubes inside of them. Now that does indicate that they are working. And what I've noticed is when you have the PTFE tube in here, it is wearing out where the filament pulls in because there's a curvature to it. So you'll see the top uh, corner of the PTFE tube will start to wear out first. So if these weren't on the AMS, the AMS would start to wear out, which would be a consumable part and I would have to replace it much more often. Keep in mind, I'm printing a lot of materials. I'm printing PLA, PETG, and even some abrasive materials like carbon fiber PETG. So if you're not printing those, you might not need these. Your mileage may vary. As always, use these at your own caution. The next thing I'm gonna recommend is printing a handle for your scraper. Every bamboo printer will come with a scraper like this. It's a razor blade that's pretty dull. It just cut me, so apparently um, not as dull as I would think. Okay, so I guess I printed my scraper in black and red because it required a blood sacrifice. So if my pain is, leads to your enjoyment, you're welcome. Please be very careful with this a uh, less sharp razor blade. It is technically a razor uh, because it very easily just cut me, which has never happened before. Um, so use these things, uh, you know, very carefully. If you are not 18 years or older, please use them with supervision from an adult. Anyways, the scraper is one of the best things you can 3D print. The bloopers at the end of this video are gonna be insane. The light has died like three times. The scraper, your Bamboo Lab printer is gonna come with a flexible print bed. It's going to be a gold PEI sheet. Now those sheets are flexible. However, having a scraper is extremely important because what you'll notice is when you take the bed and you squeeze it, and you flex it and you pop your print off, sometimes your supports will stay behind and those supports will need a scraper to be peeled off the bed. Now, please be very careful with this. You can damage your PEI bed with a metal scraper like this. So please use it very carefully, very slowly, take your time. It's best if you can take the print bed out of the printer, obviously, and work on it on a table. Now this scraper comes with your bamboo printer. It comes with the screws. All you need to print is the handle and the little riser on the back. There are several files out there and the bamboo scrapers used to have these little notches in different spots. So please make sure you are printing the corresponding scraper for your razor blade that you have. Uh, I will include the file that I linked below along with all the other files I'm gonna to mention today. So that way you can find them quickly in the description, click on them and print them for yourself. Okay, the next thing that we need to print and that is extremely, extremely useful. Please, please, please trust me on this one. These filament clips are game changers. They literally, clip into your bamboo lab spools. They only work on bamboo lab spools, by the way, if you're using Polymaker Overture, not gonna happen uh, with these guys. I'm sure there are other clips out there for those filament brands though. So these filament clips here clip right into the bamboo lab spools. You can then route your filament right through this little hole and it will keep the filament inside the spool very nicely. And you can put these in four different locations. <laughs> Future editing Bradley here. Those filament clips can only go on one side of the filament spool. Please only put them on one side. If you put them on all the sides of the filament spool, it will get stuck in the AMS and your filament will stop spinning and then uh, you will fail to extrude. On each spool. So on each side, there are two locations which are 90 degrees from each other. And apologies for my other light, which is now flickering. This is insane. Um, but these help organize your filament very, very well. So I use wall racks for my filament. And before you're using these clips, the filament would come out the side of the spool. I would put it through one of the holes on the spool and it would hit the filament next to it. So I always had to leave a slight gap in between each roll of filament. With these clips, no more. I can get a whole extra roll or two on my wall mounts, which is incredible. It is amazing. I My wife found these and I'm so glad she told me to print them. I've printed like 160 of these so far. The next thing we need to print is a spool weight like this right here. 
Now you can hear the spool weight has rice inside of it. Kind of like a maraca, a shaker, you know, from when you were in, what, sixth grade music class probably. Now this weight, you can unscrew one side of it, fill it with your rice, and then when you unscrew it, you can put it inside your Bamboo Lab reusable spools, screw it back down, and it will keep your spool heavier. Now why that matters is when your spool gets to the very end, you have just a little bit of filament on it, you will want this weight in there because it will keep the filament roll from bouncing in your AMS and causing a lot of noise and possibly even preventing a print failure if uh, the extra weight is needed. So my spool weight here, I've just gone ahead and printed out of red PLA. I would highly, highly recommend something like PETG if you plan on putting this in a filament dryer or even ASA if you have an enclosed printer and the capability to print ASA in this height. Uh, ASA often warps, so if you're not familiar with 3D printing materials, um, PLA is the easiest to print, PETG is the next easiest, and then ABS and ASA, they emit VOCs, they're a little stinky, so definitely um, try and print them in a well-ventilated area that vents outside ideally, or if you have a respirator to wear while you're in there. Um, but ideally, these uh, can go in your filament dryer if you're printing with something really strong like that. Uh, another tip I've seen people do is unscrew this, put their rice in, and then put resin, UV resin on the top, which also smells very bad and is very dangerous. Wear gloves, respirator, whole nine yards. But you can put your res resin in here, put this out in the sun or under UV light, let it harden. Make sure you only put enough resin to cover the top layer of rice that your cap still fits on. The next thing we're going to talk about is a bit of an obsession of mine at this point. It is these filament rims for Polymaker. I've gone ahead and printed these rims in red, black, pink, navy, red and black in a dual tone filament here, and a mint color, as well as several other colors that are already on my spools around the room, even glow in the dark PLA, which is amazing. Now the reason this rim is different is that it clips in to the Polymaker spool. So let me explain. Normal filament rims will have just the outer piece, not the center uh, circle looking thing, which is actually the Polymaker logo. Normal filament rims just clip onto the sides of the filament and they kind of fall off. They're so for reference, here's another roll, which is eSun. They also have their own little filament rim, which I'm not sure is made by eSun, but it is a eSun compatible filament rim. And it's on there pretty good, but you can see like if I start to play with this with just one hand for a second, you know, if I, there we go, comes right off. You just barely push it, comes right off. You can see the rim is pretty minimal there and there's nothing for it to slot into the filament roll. So let me put that to the side. Here we have a trusty roll of Polymaker Polyterra in the color Muted White. A very good color for retro products, by the way, if you're trying to go for that retro beige, grayish beige color. This one, you'll notice it has an oval in the center on that circle. That oval slots into a hole on the Polymaker filament. Not only that, it has this raised lip on the inside that also slots into the inside of the filament. Now this rim is on there like white on rice. If I take this rim and grab it on the inside, you can see it flexes a little bit, but it can pick up the whole spool with the rim. And you just put it back right on and it stays on there. This is awesome. I mean, even with my hand like really going at it, I mean, it starts to actually, I just heard it tear apart the cardboard a little bit before the rim came off. So this is an amazing, 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 amazing filament rim adapter, protector, whatever you want to call it. And look how sick that looks. That looks freaking awesome. I mean, this looks like so cool. So for reference, this is printed in Polymaker's ASA, the red color. So the reason I printed it in ASA is because ASA is a little more durable, a little more heat resistant. So when I put this in my filament dryers, it shouldn't deform at all. Now, if you're printing PLA, you can just print it in PLA, put a PLA protector on there, PLA ad rim adapter on there, and it will be fine because you're not going to heat that PLA spool up to ASA temperatures. Um, now, in this case, if I was doing an, a roll of ASA, you would want an ASA adapter ring on there. So when you dried it in your filament dryer for ASA, that that rim does not melt off. Now the other rims I have here are in several colors. So again, red ASA from Polymaker. We have black ASA from Polymaker. Uh, quick tip here, you can see this kind of deformed on the color. I actually had to take a blowtorch to return it to this black color. It actually turned white when it came off the print bed. So good tip for that. Be careful again, adult supervision, the whole nine years are not responsible for any damage to you yourself. Anyways, uh, we have a PLA uh, light pink here from Cookie Cad, the pale pink. We also, we also have the navy matte PLA from Bamboo Labs. We have the Polymaker dual tone. It is a red and black single extruded filament. You can see there it actually has red and black in the same uh, filament. It's like in the same um, line of filament. It has, it's a co-extrusion. Both, both colors, red and black, are equally 
uh, you know, extruded at the same time with one roll of filament there. And then lastly, we have the Cookie CAD mint chip here. It is an amazing filament. If you can see on the textured side, you can see the chips just a little bit, and on the non-textured on the inside, maybe even a little bit better. So altogether, these rims are really, really cool. They protect your filament really well. I'm absolutely obsessed with them. They are free file, just like everything else on this list. And you should print these immediately because Polymaker makes some incredible filament. And yes, they do fit Overture as well. It's a little bit more snug, but you can slap them onto your Overture filaments. Um, and any, any filament maker that uses the same kind of Polymaker spool there with that uh, little ring in it. Um, so yeah, those are my top six things that I would recommend printing immediately. So just to recap really quick, you've got your AMS PTFE protectors, you've got your filament scraper, which is around here somewhere and probably going to bite me. So I will watch out for that. You've got your filament clips for the bamboo lab spools specifically. You've got your AMS weights, which are super handy. And you even have your adapter rings for Polymaker and over other filaments of the like, like Overture that use the same cardboard spool. What a mouthful. <sighs> All right, we did it guys. We've made it to the end of the video. If you've gotten here and you've made it this far, please leave a like, please comment, please subscribe. I can't thank you enough. Uh, I just, I'm so excited to make more videos for this channel. Some of the things that I plan on making, I wanna do Gridfinity for this Husky uh, workbench here. I would love to do some Gridfinity for that. Um, I am really looking forward to making a wall-mounted system for some Funko Pops similar to what you saw in the intro. And I also want to make some things like a clock. I want to make some small containers like this guy here. And I want to show how tough 3D prints can be. So this is fully ASA and this is, you could leave this in your car. You could probably hit it with a hammer. Maybe if we can get like 10 likes on this video, maybe we can hit this thing with a hammer in the next video and that'd be sweet. Uh, hopefully it won't explode. Um, and we do have eye protection back here, so just keep in mind that you need proper eyewear for something like that. Um, anyways, that's all I've got for the day, guys. I'm going to be making a new video soon. Um, this video was just my first one. I wanted to get this out there right away, uh, get a video on the channel, and get some interaction with everybody. Um, I'm sure I have more ideas in my notes, so this is literally going to be uh, the 3D printing handbook is going to be the channel. So the idea is to make a whole bunch of videos that everyone can watch and learn from and that I can share all of my knowledge and all of my things that I have learned with my Prusas and my Bamboos and even my Creality's. Um, started on Creality, went to Prusa, went to Bamboo, and it's been a great journey. And I'm excited to take you guys along with me for the rest of it. All right, catch you on the next one. Now this shaker or wait, <laughs> this shaker. My light just went off again. Ah! Anyways, you put your cap back on and then that way your rice is solid in there with the resin and doesn't pop out. And now my Mac is going to sleep. <laughs>